Hello everybody, I hope you all are having a great day. Today I'm going to take a subscriber request. Thank you Emery for posting that. I'm going to do an updated video on my sous vide bone broth. A few years ago I did a first time experiment cooking ham bones in the sous vide before finishing them off in the crock pot. I got some really great results and after doing that video I decided to try a few other types of meat bones. The results were mixed. So I definitely have learned a few things over the years that I'd like to share with y'all. But before I do that, I'm going to do a quick 30 second recap of the last video for those of you who haven't seen it. If you'd like to see the old video in its entirety, there's a link right up there in the top right. While wanting to find a way to make a concentrated ham broth, I decided to throw a couple ham bones in the sous vide while cooking some beef. The beef I was cooking I used to do at 30 hours at 130 degrees. I also wanted to reduce cook time in the crock pot. Fortunately, I was successful doing both of those things. And an unexpected bonus was that I was able to reclaim all the meat left on the bone. It was still usable, unlike in a crock pot. After 30 hours in the sous vide, I only needed four to six hours in the crock pot before I could start making my favorite soups. Over the years, my go-to was loaded potato soup, but recently I started making it with cauliflower and it is delicious. Moving forward, I'm gonna talk about the two most valuable things that I've learned, but I'm also gonna to touch quickly upon some of the negatives. For me, the largest negative when it comes to using the bones in the sous vide first involves wasted time. If the bones are gonna be using for your broth can be obtained at a really cheap price, such as beef bones from the butcher, extra turkey bones after Thanksgiving dinner, chicken bones from a rotisserie. I don't believe the extra time and care of using the sous vide really gets you a lot of value. And even when you're very careful, there's a good chance that one of those sharp bones could poke the bag and you end up having to throw it all away. Now that said, I believe ham bones are an exception to the rule, and I believe there are a variety of beef bones that may be as well. It wasn't until my last experiment a couple weeks ago that I realized one of the best parts of this process involves what it does to the meat left on the bone. In the past, I wasn't really thinking about that meat at all. I was just thinking about the potato soup I wanted to make in the future and the storage space I wanted to save in the freezer. While I recognized that that ham was super delicious, it didn't strike me that it was unlike any ham I'd ever had before. It was beyond delicious. It was super tender. I don't really know how to describe it, but think about the amazing meat you get when you smoke an awesome pork shoulder. It was just fall apart, beautiful and delicious. That was one of the two most important takeaways I've got from my experiment. In the future, I'll probably leave a few pounds of meat left on that bone so I can have some amazing meals with that afterwards and then use the bone to make some incredible soup. The second big thing that I learned involves something that I believe, but to be honest, I can't prove. I believe that by kickstarting the cooking process in the sous vide, retain more flavor in the final product. I don't know where I heard this statement first, whether it was from my mom, my grandma, some random TV show, but the phrase went something like this, the more smell in the house, the less taste in the dish. For 24 hours, that bone is cooking in a vacuum sealed bag. None of that flavor is being lost. And then when I cook it in the crock pot afterwards for four to six hours, I'm not using a lot of water, just two, maybe three pints. That allows for a more concentrated ham stock. If you haven't done this before, I definitely recommend giving it a try. Also, I posted a video this week for my loaded cauliflower soup, where I swapped out the potatoes for the cauliflower. If you want to check out how I do that, feel free to click on that link at the end of this video. Also, if you enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for swinging by, and y'all have a fantastic day.